Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Max. I'm the chief evangelist over here at Happily, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to run an in-person event all on HubSpot using our app Event Happily. So I'm gonna be showing you some new stuff. Um, so this is definitely going to be relevant to folks using Event Happily 2.0 when it releases, um, which is the next iteration of our Event Happily app. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like to go create an event in HubSpot, uh, and then be able to get someone to register for that event. And we'll talk about some of the nuances there. Um, and then we'll talk about how you actually check somebody in for that event uh, using one of our CMS modules that we give you as part of Event Happily. Um, so come along with me on this journey and I will show you how easy it is, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. I'm, I'm in my HubSpot account and what I've done is I've navigated over to the left-hand side under the CRM tab and I've gone into our Happily events objects, right? So these Happily event objects represent the events themselves, right? So each time you have an event, whether it's a trade show that you're going to, or a webinar that you're hosting, or an in-person event, which is gonna be the example that I show you here, this is where you'd start your journey. You would come to here and you would create your event, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna uh, also just talk a little bit about like what you might need to set up to kind of get to something that I'm looking at as well, just so you kind of know uh, some of the steps you'll need to take after doing a fresh install, okay? Uh, and we'll dive into like a lot of those setup things in you know later video series, but I wanna show you the finished product right now so you get an idea of how easy it can be in HubSpot, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by hitting create happily event, and this is me creating my event uh, in HubSpot, and I'll explain what these different uh, uh, fields are as we go ahead and build them out. Um, this first one's pretty simple. This is the event name, right? So I'm gonna do this really simple here. I'm gonna call this Max's birthday party. Obviously this could be a webinar, could be a other in-person event that you're doing, but just for the sake of the demo, we're gonna use my birthday, okay? Now, the event name is what you're gonna see as the name of the event, which is pretty simple. Um, you also will see this on any of your listing pages, right? So if you have any of our CMS modules set up that would show uh, the different events that you have on your website, this is the name that people would see. So keep in mind, this is an outward facing thing here, all right? Now we also have a description. This is also something that will be seen on the outside world if you're using our CMS modules, um, and it'll be displayed right below the name of the actual event itself, right? So I'm just gonna call this uh, come celebrate Max's uh, 37th birthday. Okay, 37. Here we come. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a start date and time, All right, So these are date and time fields in HubSpot that we use so you can get really precise around um, you know, when the event's actually gonna take place and when it's going to end. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my birthday, which is gonna be August uh, 4th, 25, and it's gonna start at 8 a.m. and then it's gonna end that same day, August 4th at, we'll say, 11 o'clock at night. We're gonna party all day. It's gonna be a great time, all right? Now, I'm gonna come down here. Uh, I have this other option here called hosting event. I'm gonna say yes. Now, just so you know what this is, hosting event really kind of helps you categorize your different events. Um, it also powers some like automation in the back end for us. You don't really need to worry about it too much. Um, but what this kind of denotes is, is this an event your team is actually hosting? In this case, since it's an in-person event that we're doing, we would say yes. If this was like a trade show or a conference you were going to and you weren't actually hosting the event, this helps you kind of determine if it's one of those types of events or if it's one that you're hosting. So you get a high level of you know categorization, right? Uh, but also you can use this to trigger different types of workflows for things like event lead capture, how the events automatically get set up through workflows, things of that nature, right? Um, so we're gonna choose yes. And then for event type, we have some default options in here, such as in-person, virtual, hybrid, trade show, conference, workshop, course. You can add any additional types that you want. Again, this is really meant to give you like a higher level of sort of categorization, all right? But I'm gonna go ahead and hit create happily event here. All right, cool. So we've created the event. All right, um, I've set up a number of different tabs here. Um, in the future, we'd obviously like to have these automatically injected into HubSpot. And one day we'll be able to do that, which is great. But this is something we set up for you via onboarding. Now, everyone likes to see different things when it comes to things like event planning, 
registration and attendance information, event sessions. The beautiful thing of us building this on HubSpot is you can set this up however you want. Not everyone manages events the same way, right? But we can set it up for you. You can go in there and customize it. You can change some things around. It really depends. And, and that's the beauty of, again, doing this inside of HubSpot. Um, but we've created this in-person event, right? Now, the question is, how do we actually get someone to register for the event, all right? Now, what I've done is I've built a little automation that is going to uh, automatically generate a form link for me that someone can fill out. And when they fill it out, they'll get registered for the actual event itself, right? So I have this registration page property here. Um, this is a standard field that we inject on these event objects. So you can quickly find whatever the link you have to go to to actually register for the event itself. I've also got a registration form one here, which will basically let me go edit the form if I wanna edit whatever is sitting on the form. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit this registration page. And you'll notice that it's just gonna take me to a very simple HubSpot form, okay? Now, 99% of the time, you're gonna be putting these on like HubSpot landing pages. In my case, in this demo portal, I haven't set up my landing pages and my registration pages yet. I'm gonna walk you through how to do that in another video on how to create dynamic or just one-off CMS pages in HubSpot that you can use for registration, right? Uh, in my case, I'm just keeping it simple right now and I just have a standalone HubSpot form. OK, now uh, what's cool about this is that the link that I'm generating to this via a workflow is actually injecting this very special property in the back end called the event registration trigger. And what it's doing is it's dropping in the ID, so the record ID of the event itself. Now, the property that it's automatically injecting this into is a property that we're actually listening to a little web hook on, right? And that little ID is gonna tell event happily which event someone should sign up for. This is one of many different ways to trigger registrations. We have workflow actions that will let you basically say, hey, if someone fills out this form, register them for this specific event and these additional sessions, right? But you can also do it in sort of tricky or more dynamic ways like this using something like a query parameter, right? But just to show you what actually happens when someone registers for an event, just come in and imagine that they fill out this form. Maybe it's a form you have sitting on a HubSpot landing page. There could be 10 different ways that you set up your registration to work exactly how you want it to. But I'm just gonna go ahead and fill out this information here, right? Just as if someone was filling out a HubSpot form and I'm gonna hit register for event. Now what's happening here is that contact had a new contact property called event registration trigger get updated by this ID that we're pushing through. That's hitting a web hook on our end. We're listening to it. We know which event to actually register them for. So what's gonna happen is when I go back into the event, we'll see a registrant object created for this event for that contact, right? So if I come into here, you'll see a couple of things. One, if I go to my registration and attendance tab, um, if you haven't customized these, these, uh, these records yet, you might see it on the right-hand side over here under an object called happily registrants, right? You'll see two things. One, I can see my contact is associated to this event and it has a nice little label that says contact registered for event, which tells me this contact is associated to this event because they registered for the event. I will also see a registrant object down here. So let's go ahead and click into this. Let me explain what this is. You might be saying, hey, Max, why do we also need a registrant object when the contact is already associated to the event? A registrant object is meant to represent a specific instance of someone actually registering for an event, and it's gonna tell you everything about that person uh, and the experience they had at the event, right? Such as which sessions they signed up for, what feedback they gave, did they actually attend the event or not? What unique information do you know about them for this particular time that they attended this particular event, right? So you might, you know, build a bunch of custom properties on these objects that would hold things such as like dietary restrictions, t-shirt size, badge ID number, right? All things that can change every single time someone goes to different events that you have, right? One of the worst parts of the other, you know, um, point solutions for event management that integrate with HubSpot is the most common thing people complain to us about is that those integrations just overwrite contact property data over and over and over again, which makes it a nightmare 
to be able to report on your event performance because that data keeps getting overwritten, right? The registrant object memorializes that data. So as people go to multiple events you have, you have different information about each time someone went to an event and it, you don't lose it, right? It doesn't get just overwritten in a contact property. So it allows us to store that information, but also give you more of like a 360 degree view of everything that someone did at that event, whether it was sessions, certain properties that they gave, feedback that they gave, things like that, okay? Now, we have this person registered, so I'm gonna come back to the event right here, and let's fast forward in time a little bit. Let's say, for example, uh, it's the day of an event, right? And we wanna track if someone actually attended the event itself, okay? So a really cool thing that Event Happily gives you is we have a, um, we have a in-person check-in page. So let me show you what it looks like to use the check-in module so we can track attendance for this event. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the link here to get to the in-person check-in page. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down here. I can also search if I want to. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit check-in where I see the guest. Now this works great on a mobile device. You might have this on an iPad, maybe it's sitting on a laptop, but we can see that the user has been checked in. And then we'll also notice if we come back down here that we can undo this in case we did it by accident, but we can also see when we come back to this page, if this person is checked in or not. Now, once we come back and take a look at our event again, we can see that the registrant has a new association label that says attended event. And that's because we checked them in using that C CMS module. Additionally, we can see the contact to this event also has an association label that says contact attended the event. Now, the reason it's important that we also maintain an association between the contact and the event is if you wanna be able to do things like event-based or session-based workflows that will email any of the contacts associated to them that either attended or did not attend the event or just anybody who might be registered for that event. It makes it really, really easy to use automation to like send pre and post event emails to anyone who's registered and maybe it did or did not attend the event. And that's how you run an in-person event in HubSpot. So just to recap, we showed you how to create an event to represent the event itself. We showed you how to actually register someone for the event. In this case, we use the event registration trigger property on the contact. But again, there are more ways to do this, which we'll cover in other videos. And then we showed you how you can use our powerful CMS modules to actually track in-person attendance. And we haven't even gotten to the cool stuff like QR code scanning as well. We're gonna be talking about how to set that stuff up in some upcoming videos. But for now, if you guys have any other questions on how how to actually run in-person events inside of HubSpot. Maybe you're sick of that marketing events object that doesn't make it as easy as this. Let us know in the comments below. We're here to help. And you know it was built happily.